All right, we're going to continue with section uh, 35.2, uh, spherical mirrors, but now we're going to, it's really just a short discussion, then we kind of give some general rules for conv concave and convex mirrors. So let's uh, share the screen uh, where we left off. Uh, last time we, we discussed the uh, uh, concave mirrors and we ended up with a concave satellite dish. So now we're going to do convex spherical mirrors. And you can see that uh, I, I have a con, uh, convex mirror here. Uh, in a concave mirror, the image starts inverted. And as you get close, it, it changes and, and becomes upright and magnified. With a con, uh, convex mirror, it's always upright. The image is always upright, and, and it's always, uh, uh, it, it doesn't magnify. Um, so here is the, the ray diagram. Uh, you can see that there's this ray that goes uh, from the object to the center, um, the center of uh, radius. And, and back out, it's reflected right on the mirror. And then from the, uh, the t tip of the, the object, it goes to the, um, the central axis in, and is reflected. You know, again, you get theta equals theta prime from the reflection. You have the, the length P, the object length, and you have the image length Q. Um, so, uh, here is a, a good example of a convex mirror. Uh, this is one in a, a parking garage. Uh, you can they use it so that you can uh, see oncoming oncoming cars and avoid uh, uh, hitting them. And there's other uses for convex um, mirrors. Uh, let's uh, the equations uh, for for. Uh, Convex and concave mirrors is the same, uh, but there's some things that we need to uh, keep straight. There's a front side, uh, and that's the side that the light uh, rays come from, the, um, the front side of the real side. It's a P, uh, P and Q are positive. If, if, if it's on in the front side, the P is positive, Q is positive. Um, the incident light, the reflected light. And then you have the back side or the virtual side. Uh, P and Q are negative, they happen to be on that side, and uh, there's no light coming from that side. Uh, so that's a flat, convex, or concave mirrored surface. And these are the, uh, the uh, sign conventions. The object location, P, it's positive when the object is in front of a mirror, and that's for a real object. And the object is in back of the mirror, that's a virtual object. Uh, image location Q, the image in front, it's, it's a real image. If the image is in back of the mirror, it's a virtual image. The virtual image is when the, the rays appear to come from the object, but because they're on the back side, they're not really coming from the back side. The image height H prime, the image is upright. Um, it, it, it's positive. If the image is inverted, it's negative. Um, and we see that, we only see that with convex, I'm sorry, concave mirrors. Convex mirrors are always upright. Uh, the focal length F and the radius R the, is positive if the mirror is concave and it's negative if the mirror is convex uh, because the radius of curvature is on the other side of the reflective surface and it, uh, hence the uh, focal length is, uh, is on the other side also. Uh, remember that, um, Focal length is half the uh, radius of curvature. Uh, magnification M, if the image is upright, it's positive. If the image is inverted, it's negative. Okay, now let's look, do some, some ray tracing. If you recall, they, uh, they, always, they always have this red, uh, whether it's concave or convex. I'll go back to, um, uh, let's, uh, I guess this is it. You can see that they have the red going from the uh, the top of the object um, through the the um, to the mirror and then back. It goes through the central point and then they have this one that goes uh, to the the primary axis and reflects all the, the on the primary axis. And they do the same with um, 
uh, the the convex mirror. You have the the red uh, that goes from the the top of the object through the central uh, through the center of the radius of curvature, and then you have from the the top of the object to the primary axis uh, and uh, reflecting off here. Now that's not the way we're going to construct them. We're going to actually use three rays to construct uh, the images. And we're going to do this in the lab. So uh, here again is the uh, the mirror. The, the way we're going to do it, we're going to use three uh, three steps. The it's going to be a little bit different in the uh, uh, in the lab. It, uh, it, and I forget the order, but I know the 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 this red is called the chief axis, and I always remember chief and and uh, chief and central both start with C, and so in the lab book they call this the central axis. It goes from the top of the object through the center of uh, the radius of curvature off of the mirror and back. So you can see red here through the center and off the mirror and back here. Uh, from the center to the object mirror and back. So you can see this, the, the red always goes through the center of the radius of curvature, irrespective of whether it's a concave mirror or a, a convex mirror. Well, in this case, they, they have uh, both, uh, these are two um, convex. This is a con, I'm, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. These are both concave, this is a convex, but you can see that the red, goes from the top uh, of the object through the central axis and back. Of course, it's reflecting off the mirror. Now, the next one, we're, the next two always have a parallel, um, they always have a parallel component. Um, and you can see from here, let's start here. This is actually the one they call the first one. If from the top of the object, horizontally uh, parallel to the principal axis, it bounces off the uh, mirror and through the focal point. Okay, the one after that, the green one, through the focal point and comes back and uh, uh, comes back parallel. And the intersection of those three determine your image. Now, this isn't always easy to do. I've done it and it, you know, sometimes, uh, I think I have, do I have some of them uh, that, that I tried to, tried to do and I even, I even made, uh, I, I don't know about, I have a shaded area. Now let me, let me stop the share so that you can see it better. Uh, you, you know, I've, I've tr I tried to do these uh, to, to just convince myself that they all work. But sometimes you end up with it doesn't they don't all three line up so i ended up with this shaded area so okay well the the image an inverted image is somewhere in the in this gray region because i couldn't get it uh get them all to coincide and let's go back to the share um where is it okay uh so we have the the red through the central axis from the top through the focal point, from the top through the focal point, and then back. So once again, red parallel to the principal axis and reflected through the focal point. From the top through the focal point, and then parallel to the principal axis. So that was a con concave with the the uh, the object on the other side of the um, on the other side of the center um the center of the radius of curvature now here this is concave also but here the object is on the other side of the fo focal point um and i've i've got a little demonstration that i'm gonna uh, uh, show you after this um okay so when the object uh, when the object is out here it's inverted and as you move in, as you move in, this will move out. And right as you get to the center, the, the center of the radius of curvature, you, your image is about, um, has a magnification of one. And then there's this real, uh, 
strange air, strange section that where this it becomes very distorted and because you you're going from a uh i don't know that i have my little um my little arrow i i misplaced it uh you you're going from a uh an inverted image to all of a sudden it becomes uh it it becomes upright and magnified. I mean that you, if you have if you have like a uh, uh, if you have a uh, a you know shaving mirror or a makeup mirror, uh, it, you, if you stand far back, you see your image inverted, uh, and as you get closer, it gets kind of weird, and then all of a sudden you see yourself magnified. You can try that if you have a a, a makeup mirror or shaving mirror. I call it a shaving mirror. I don't like that. I don't put makeup on. So um, I call it a shaving mirror. The, uh, um, you go through this transition point where it's, it's, it's kind of distorted. And then it goes into an uh, upright, uh, upright uh, image. Uh, okay. And, and so it, it's, it's once you get past this focal point that it becomes upright. Now, at the on a convex mirror, um, it's always upright. This image will always be upright, uh, and just varies in size size depending on the um, uh, the position. Uh, but you can see the three rays, uh, the one through the center, parallel through the focal point. But you see the focal point is on the back side here, and uh, from the uh, top through the focal point, but you see it's reflected off the mirror and it goes back that way. Okay, you wish to start a fire by reflecting sunlight from a mirror onto some paper under a pile of wood. Which would be the best choice for the type of mirror? Flat, concave, or convex? Well, you don't, a convex will just disperse uh, the rays. You want to use a concave mirror where they're concentrated like just like I got that candle to focus on the uh, on the half screen, I got the candle to focus on the half screen. If you could get the sun to focus on on uh, on that half screen, it would probably start a fire. I'm not going to try it because this is the school's equipment. It's not my equipment. All right, uh, concave. Now consider the image uh, in the mirror in, fi in the figure uh, based on the appearance of this image you would conclude that the mirror is concave and the image is real. Uh, the mirror is concave and the image is virtual or the mirror is uh, convex and the image is uh, real or the mirror, the mirror is convex and the image is virtual. And if I think if, um, it is concave and it, the image is virtual in this case. Oops, the mirror is concave and the image is virtual. Okay, and then we're gonna go to images by refraction. 